Well, the game is beginning here, and on the right, or left side of the map, back to elementary school for me soon, on the left side of the map, we have our pink Protoss player from the Team Fanatic MSI. It is TT1. And his opponent down here at the 6 o'clock position, our red Protoss player, that is Rain Kiwikaki. All right, so close positions by air. Now, you don't see a lot of air units other than observers, of course, made in PvP, but you never know. You never know what we might see here. Um, more likely, we're going to see something akin to the Blink Stalker play that we saw yeah. in the first game. That still seems to be the standard that most Protoss players are comfortable with. This is another one of those maps where you can definitely blink into the main in a lot of places. So we'll have to see what the players do, but I would not be surprised at all if that's the direction that this game goes. I would love to see some Stargate play, though. We already saw the four-gate row that was just used for the Observer and Blink Stalkers and stuff sure. like that in... Uh, uh, game number one, we saw a pretty traditional four gate in game number two, and I'd love to see something off the wall, whether it be some sort of a quick expand build or whether it be just super high tech. Yep. There's always a chance one of the Protoss players will decide to go DTs. Big risk if your opponent makes, you know, a forge or makes a robo, but you still see it actually fairly frequently, so. Yes, know. indeed. And uh, looks like cast coming up for TT1 just to, excuse me, shade later than on Kiwikaki's, and we'll see if Kiwikaki decides to save up that extra Chrono Boost once again. Hmm. Oh, probes. We're going to meet in the night on Metalopolis. They're like, we're from different Protoss uh, planets. We can't keep meeting like this. Uh, 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 Let's no, just no, pretend no, we didn't see each other. other. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to hide it. It's Romeo and Juliet of the StarCraft world. <laughs> Darn you, Capulet family! <laughs> anyway, Kiwikaki makes by its any way other in. Name. <laughs> And uh, Cybernetic Score coming down for both players now. Kiwikaki just slightly ahead on his timings. Oh, really early second gas from Kiwikaki. And you know what? I always say it. If you see a second gas for Protoss before 20 supply, I just get this DT sense going. <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong. We'll see. TT1. Both of them actually getting their uh, mm -hmm. second gas before 20. Actually, TT1 got it on 20, I believe. So. It came up pretty early for yeah. both players, though, and, uh, you know, Kiwikaki's, we'll see if he uses it or not. He has one Harvester on it for the time being, but uh, Kiwikaki's, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, TT1's probe was actually getting very close to it, and I don't know if he just wanted to ensure that it wasn't going to get stolen, because he's not, uh, there we go, finally, he has two Harvesters on it, so we will start incorporating it into his play. Yep, just two Harvesters there right now, and, uh, yeah, no third Harvester on that second gas yet for Kiwikaki. Interesting. All right, so TT1, in the meantime, is mining completely from both of his gases as well. Getting that second gateway out. Probably going to try to put some pressure on with those stalkers as well. Looks like Kiwikaki going for the same thing. And yeah, three on gas for both of the refineries for Kiwikaki as well. The assimilators, I mean. Yep. My bad. <laughs> You're fine. It's okay. Oh, there we have Twilight Council coming down for TT1. Ah, this okay. is just after second gate is finished, which is mm. interesting. Usually you see three gate, then Twilight Council, or if you're going to go right after Templar or something like that, you usually see it before second gate is put down. But uh, Well, it looks like Kiwikaki put down his robo, so I think we're going to see that, that uh, blink play from him as mm -hmm. well. Probably going to get the Observer, get... Twilight Council out, get Blink started, start making Immortals as well. But TT1, yeah, I mean, not getting the Robo out as well, getting that Twilight Council instead first. So what does he have planned? Well, it's just about to finish up, so we'll see if he changes into something else here in just a second. He's got a little bit of gas saved up. It goes right into Blink right oh, okay. away. So just uh, wants to make sure that he gets it out very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah just really fast Blink. Planning on trying to out Micro his opponent. Now, for Kiwikaki, there's a pylon hidden within the gas on his, uh, you know, that kind of ring of gas on the left side of his base. Yeah. So we might see possibly something there. We'll have to see. I mean, it could be if oh, he decides to move like later in into the game. So, yeah, but I think this is actually, he's showing the exact same build that we saw in game number one, uh, where he did uh, he did two gate into Robo, um, into three gate Twilight Council, and then adds a fourth gate as he's able to actually support the production off of enough probes. Right, so of nothing uh, too out of the ordinary. All right. Kiwikaki, yeah, just going for that four-gate blink. And he's going to have it so much faster than Kiwikaki. Yeah, TT1's already about ready to attack. You know, these gateways are just about to finish up, and uh, he's going to try and press in because he does have a little bit of a unit advantage. But there is a sentry up there for Kiwikaki, and uh, no, of course, no Robo, Observer, anything like that for TT1. So Kiwikaki should be able to hold this at bay. 
Wow, look at that. With that last Chrono Boost, the Blink finishes at the exact same time the last two gateways become warp gates. That is some crisp timing, man. And that is going to allow him to warp in some more Stalkers. And Kiwikaki's got one Sentry here, but he is going to need to be pretty careful with this situation. Yeah, he really is. T21 uh, trying to make his way up and blinks away right away. That Sentry yep. actually has 80 energy, so by the time the second one goes away, it's actually going to be able to cycle through two more here in a second. And Immortal being Chrono boosted out very quickly for Kiwikaki. If he's able to get that up there, his defense is going to look a lot more powerful. Yeah, 11 Stalkers to just the six of Kiwikaki. And the thing is, is with that... Uh, minus one vision to ramps now after patch 1.4. It's a little bit more difficult for TT1 to get a unit far enough up the ramp for him to blink up or possibly warp in there later on if he tries to put a pylon in there. And that is giving Kiwikaki so much time to prepare a good defense for this. Yeah, and he's got another sentry that just warped in as well, so we'll be able to throw that down once again. Yeah. Oh, wow. that force field getting down just in time. <laughs> yeah, wow. it really was. Um, and there's already one immortal in the mix. Is a second coming up? No, no, nothing for the time being. Looks like he's just going to try and defend behind this. Oh, he and, gets uh, up enough. Oh, here he goes. There's the blink. The immortal already doing quite a bit of damage. Uh, Kiwikaki actually preemptively pulling a few probes so we can make sure that he deals with this, although the Zealot was the one taking all of that damage, and, keep, and uh, TT1 is actually doing a considerable amount. That Immortal oh, yeah. has gotten a few kills, though. Well, the Stalker count is so high right now for TT1. He's just kind of thinning out the uh, Stalker count for Kiwikaki, and with the warpings that TT1 is doing, he's going to continue to be able to put pressure on there. He's already reduced the probe count to even. They're both at 26 right now, so things very tense at the moment. This really could go either way, but if the second Immortal can come out, for Kiwikaki, he's going to be in a much better position. I agree 100%, and uh, the sentry is brought in as well, so it's going to be able to throw down at least one force field. We'll see if TT1 waits any longer. No, here come the units. Force field immediately goes down, so Kiwikaki is going to wait until that next immortal comes up. Does yep. he have another sentry coming in? He does, so we'll see a couple of force fields uh, with the, fall. Yeah, with the Chrono Boost, the second immortal finishes right now, and yeah, two immortals is going to be pretty tough to uh, move in against with TT1. Now, this is actually super tense at the moment, though, because Kiwikaki, he has to hold, and he has to hold right now. Um, let's see, oh, he's going to work with another sentry. No, uh, pulling a few probes once again. There are two Immortals in the mix. Uh, the Zealot's trading at the ramp, and Kiwikaki just wants to hold off long enough for those sentries to be able to be utilized again. Uh, they're not being targeted down at the moment. The Immortals are doing quite a bit of damage. Kiwikaki actually able to engage with his Zealots, or at least uh, buffering a little bit of damage. God, six range Immortals are so good. Oh, I know, that range helping Kiwikaki out so much there. And TT1, man, I don't think he's going to be able to break Kiwikaki right now. I think he's going to have to go home, maybe try to expand. Looks like he might be willing to try it one more time here, but I don't know. I, I don't think uh, Kiwikaki is going to be able to be broken right now. No, and uh, looks like the next... Oh, oh, he does actually blink onto the high ground, and uh, the Immortal has to pull away as fast as possible. However, the second Immortal is not being targeted down. The uh, Zealots for TT1 are making their way in, but they're not actually doing that much damage. Now with the Immortal support, looks like Kiwikaki is going to hold him back. Yeah, that was a mistake for TT1 to try to break Kiwikaki there. He's going to leave himself very vulnerable to a possible counterattack, and at the very least... Kiwikaki is going to be ahead in probes as well. He's up two probes right now. Ooh, already warping in a couple of units into TT1's base as well. Oh, look at that. Wow. Two Zealots coming into TT1's base. They're getting themselves some kills here. Uh, yes, indeed. And at the same time, Kiwikaki is going to move his main force across the map. Actually, take a look at the workers killed. Seven force of Kiwikaki actually evening that up quite a bit just with those two Zealots. He is actually ahead in workers. Uh, considering oh. I didn't actually realize Kiwikaki was warping in that many, almost lost an immortal though. Yeah, I was very close to losing that immortal, but Kiwikaki does have a pretty big supply advantage right now for PvP here. And he could just try to push in and end the game right now. He's got the units to do it with, I think. And uh, TT1 tried to warp in a Zealot just as Kiwikaki had done. Oh no, those Zealots actually ran past each other, so now Kiwi uh, Kiwikaki wow. is not going to be able to defend against that. However, he does blink immediately into uh, TT1's base. Those Immortals have not really been utilized quite yet, so TT1 has actually taken out a number of Kiwikaki Stalkers. Yeah, Kiwikaki pulling his own Stalkers back to try to let the Immortal range take over. The Immortals have come up the ramp, now they've gone down the ramp. And uh, Kiwikaki just going to try to play it a little bit safer here. Yeah, and uh, actually that uh, Immort or, I'm sorry, that Zealot actually killed 11 workers, so not a bad job there. Another force field goes down to the bottom of the ramp, so Kiwikaki not going to be able to make his way up for a while. Yeah, and now it's the one. 
now it's Kiwi Kaki. Looks like he's not going to be able to break TT1. Yeah, but he's got a pretty good advantage in this game. He's up and workers continuing he to does. produce them. He's got the better tech in place, so he can kind of safely play the expand and uh, just outmass his opponent. He's going to have That's the resources true. available to do that. Well, we're at one of those positions in the PvP where it's just kind of like, well, uh -oh. what are they going to do? Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, that's what TT1's going to do. He's going to try and hold these units at bay. Oh, wow. He's going to try to do it with just a couple sentries and zealots. It's going to be difficult, but he might get the jump on Kiwi Kaki here. We'll find out. Uh, this immortal is going to be shot down very quickly, but at the same time, Kiwi Kaki's making his way into TT1's base. Oh, this is going to come race. right down to the wire. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a base race here. It looks like TT1's going to have a little bit of a lead. He's got a couple more pylons out on the map than TT1 does right now. And uh, here comes uh, TT1 Zealots, although Kibikaki still has pretty good blink control, and he's uh, neutralizing many of those Zealots. Whoa. At the same time, the Immortals are actually doing quite a bit of damage. Back at the base of Kibikaki, the Robo Bay was killed milliseconds before an Immortal came out that would have slowed down TT1 quite a bit. But I don't know, it's one of those crazy situations where we have to take a look, count the buildings, huh. see who's got the better chance here. Yeah, and it looks like uh, he's chasing down Kiwikaki's probes yeah. at the moment. How many units uh, that's actually going to be? Oh, there's one probe somewhere, so it'll be able to hide a pylon. But uh, T21 really doesn't have that many structures of his own. In fact, he's down out of gateways. He's really only got this pylon over on the right-hand side. There are no probes on the map right now at all for TT1. Kiwikaki has one remaining. They've both lost their nexuses, though. And uh, I think that's still, this is still going to favor uh, Kibikaki. Oh, Where's yeah, his probe so. at the moment? I'm actually not sure. Um, I believe he still had one. Yeah, he still has one down somewhere. Oh, there it is. So it's going to be able to bury a uh, pylon in the case that that comes under fire. Kibikaki's got the bigger army. He's still got most of his buildings left. That's one kind of advantage to having those immortals is that you will kill the buildings that much faster than your opponent when you're in this kind of crazy base trade situation. And Kiwi Kaki, yeah, he's just going to go pylon hunting now. Yeah, and it looks like uh, TT1 is just pulling back to his own pylons, but as long as uh, Kiwi Kaki gathers up his forces, uh, he's going to be just fine. His immortals are going to be able to uh, provide the advantage that he needs to take down these last two pylons. Well, you know, that's one of the things. Basically, the only thing that TT1 can hope for is to try to force a stalemate, but no, he's going for it here. Yeah, because uh, Kibikaki was forcing the issue with that pylon up at the top. This Immortal is doing so much damage. Seven kills. Look how low in health those were, but how many kills they have actually uh, offered to the mix. TT1 with just oh. a couple of forces down to less than six supply. GG! And Rain Kibikaki takes down Fnatic MSI TT1 in a very close game three. That That's is about as close as they man. get. 